Well, we know it was a grueling game. One week later, and you're the hero again. Welcome to the life of a champion, an existence that puts your every move into an examination of what you may or may not be feeling or dealing with on any given day. Ryan Villapoto knows this. Villapoto lives this. Another round of the AMA Toyota Motocross Lights Championship with RV and the boys is next in Texas. Freestone County Raceway in Wortham, Texas is the site of round three of the AMA Motocross Lights presented by FMF. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside former champion Jeff Emig as we get set for the next round of competition. Good look down over this racetrack, the second year that we visited this series or this racetrack on the series. It turned out to be a wonderful facility last year and everybody, including Ryan Dungey on the number 28, looking forward to racing here once again. Bikes are making their way out, getting set to go racing here as we get them all gridded up for moto number one. After two rounds of competition, here's a look at the points, and let's check in with our Aaron Bates for progressive pre-race reports. If you want to be the best, then you better surround yourself with success. And that's exactly what the number 28 of Ryan Dungey is doing. As soon as he finished racing at Glen Helen, he packed up his gear and he moved to Florida to live and train at James Stewart's house. The training program that James is on, obviously it's working for him. And Ryan Dungey is hoping that it's going to do just the same for him. He wasn't able to race here in Texas last year due to a broken collarbone, but he said he's doing everything he possibly can during the week to prepare himself and be ready to give it 100% for today. Today's race. He is trying to improve on his results from last weekend. A second overall. There's only one spot better to go, and he's the one rider that's hoping that it's going to get hotter and hotter as the day goes on to prove how fit he truly is. Well, the heat is definitely going to be a problem as you take a look at Villapoto. Jeff, how much an advantage will that be training with James Stewart? Well, it's, it's definitely going to show you the fast way around the track, but it'll help him build his intensity because Stewart comes out each and every race fired up, just like number one does Ryan Villapoto. One of his advantages is he's a good starter, and he comes out of the gate rocking and ready to go. Here's our Honda race format. 40 riders in the gate, two motos, 30 minutes plus two laps. Top 20 riders in each moto scoring points. The highest point total after two motos wins the overall event. And our Suzuki starting grid. And this is, of course, how they finished in practice. That's how they pretty much line up for the first moto. Yeah, this goes off the lap times. And once again, Villapoto was on top, but it's so important. I cannot stress it enough how important it is for the other guys like Stroop and Dungey, all of them to try to challenge Villapoto in practice and gain that confidence. Here we go, moto number one, ready to get underway. Coming out of that first corner, it's Villapoto with the red number one, getting the jump on the field in the hole shot. Got a couple of teammates just behind him. Ryan Seif setting it forth, and you can see Look how much water they've put down on the track, Ralph. Look at the bikes skate around underneath of the riders. This is where grabbing the hole shot is going to be so key. I mean, for Villapoto, he set the fastest time, but he also, look at that inside rut. It's got so much water in there. So for all the rest of the riders, it's going to be really hard to get out of that mud and water that's spraying up onto your tear-offs, onto your goggles. That's Austin Stroop on the number 51, running along in second place. And right behind him is the 123. That's Brett Metcalf. So the Kawasaki riders, one, two, and three. And Jeff, it looked like they were all lined up on the inside of the gate, too. Yeah, the gate choice here at Wortham is to the right side. And basically, fastest qualifier goes all the way to the right. 40th goes all the way to the left. They just kind of fan out. And you can see the 45 Canaries mixing it up. Oh, yeah, he's going to take the spot away from Metcalf and Sipes on the 57 trying to come with him. So Bobby Canary on the 45, the Honda. This is where you can really blow through a lot of those tear-offs or roll-off poles that you have. You can see it's pretty dusty on the outside as Sipes goes right through a wet spot. Canary's trying to find a dry line. 
It's not bad in the first couple of positions, but these riders here, as Metcalf takes another position back, there just is no way out of that roost. And if you burn through your tear-offs in, in the first lap of this race, what are you gonna have left 35 minutes from now? It's gonna be really tough. Ryan Sipes in the blue riding gear. Sipes really has that MDK KTM working pretty good here, Jeff, in moto number one. Definitely does. We just see our leader go by. There's Stroop. He lost a little traction just in front of Ryan Sipes. He's putting in a great ride. He had that battle going that first lap with Canary and Metcalf and really worked hard to get past those riders. Now he's got his sights on second place of Austin Stroop. And just in front of him is our champion, Villapoto. So right now, Sipes is really on the gas, working hard. Getting through these Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki teammates is not going to be easy, though. Well, there's a whole host of them. Look who's did. speaking. Oh, Metcalf makes a yeah. little bobble. He sure did. And there's Dungey on the number 28, the Suzuki rider, coming up in the yellow machine. And you're seeing tear-offs flying all over. And if you watch, Ralph, when you see in these long sweeper corners when a rider gets locked into one of these deep grooves, OK? The rider behind him gets in that because that's the preferred line. Well, right now, there's so much moisture down there. You see the rider slipping and slide, trying to find new lines. But once you get locked in that line, you can't get out. The rider's just getting hammered with roost. Here's Canary running in fourth. And you can see the pack coming up behind him. And Dungey trying to get inside a Metcalf. And the rock star Makita Suzuki rider makes a little contact with the rear wheel of Metcalf's machine. Let's see where the line choice is. You see. Right there, just what I was talking about. Dungey was locked in there and just decided to go wide. You see, he had to back off a little bit. That sweeper section, extremely wet right now. Dungey really working hard to make some moves here and work his way up. It looked six. It really looked like Metcalf was going to fall victim to Dungey, but now all of a sudden, Metcalf's found his groove again and he's closed back in on Canary. Right now, also early in this first moto. Temperature's getting pretty hot, but not too bad. The second moto is going to be even worse. A lot of humidity down here in Texas, and it's a real struggle for the riders. And I think this is this is one of the, if not the first, really hot race of the season. So this is where the fitness of the riders and all the work that you put in during the week, this is where they'll be tested. Makes me like this air-conditioned booth even more. Oh, yeah, no doubt. We love sitting in the TV booth and calling these events, but I tell you, Ralph, the hotter it got, the better it was. I loved racing these hot, humid, sweaty races, getting out there and all this mud and the bumps. That's what motocross is all about. And that's a big part of it. It is a mental challenge. If you can convince yourself you like it, that you're going to thrive in it, you just might. Right now, Ryan Villapoto is. The full-size Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Motorcycle racing is a non-stop adrenaline rush. Stay on top of it all with SpeedTV.com. Get the latest motorcycle racing news results and the in-depth commentary you crave. It's online and all in one place. SpeedTV.com, your online motorsports authority. Good look at downtown Dallas. We're just outside of there in Wortham, Texas, and Ryan Sipes, we had a great run going, is out of it, Jeff. Take a look here. This is a replay of the start that Sipes far on the right just gets inside of that BTO Sports banner, but it was the three Kawasaki riders that were right out front. Canary spoiled the Kawasaki party at this point. He's got up there just in front of Metcalf. So Dungey also. Really tough break for the MDK KTM rider, and look at this. Here comes Dungey, the number 28, the yellow Suzuki on the move. And if you remember back, it was Sipes had a problem at Glen Helen also. Uh, with that MDK KTM, so maybe trying to squeeze a little too much horsepower out of it, keeping up with the with the front runners here. But while it held together, it was running great. That's always the case. Yeah, right? just not but long enough. Engines run the best just before they explode. Not, uh, it could have been another problem, so we could, I guess we shouldn't speculate that there was actually a problem with the engine, but who knows what could happen in this motocross race is there rocks can get up into the, into the chain wheels and crack stuff, uh, you know, ignition problems, all, all kinds of things. 
Jeff, as we watch right now, oh, problems for Austin Stroop, who is running in second place on the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. And here comes Dungey, blasting by to take over second. A real gift for Dungey. He doesn't have to work his way past Stroop, who's been riding so good. But Stroop has always pushed so hard. He's a rider that is pushing the limits, tends to fall down a little bit more, but he's, he's a rookie. It's okay for him to be out there. He's trying to chase down number one, and it's great to see Austin have that sort of confidence and where he wants to go up there and race with number one. I think he got the taste of that overall victory at Glen Helen and liked it. Problem is that he hasn't won a moto. So great to see the young guy out there pushing hard. Just made a small mistake and tipped over. It's part of the learning curve, isn't it? No, most definitely, yeah. But, you know, we've seen Villapoto on the ground a couple times, too, in his rookie year, but he was phenomenal. He saw him on the ground a few times during the Supercross season this year, and he bounced back from that. Well, that's the makeup of a champion as you keep coming back, you figure out what it was, where you made your mistakes, and try not to do it again. There is Jason Lawrence on the 338, our first look at him on the Yamaha. Should be back in about sixth position, Jeff. I believe he's chasing down Andrew McFarland right now. Watching the battle for second now is Stroop on the 51. The Green Kawasaki tries to reel Dungey back in. And, you know, we talked about Dungey being invited down to James Stewart's place to go train. And, I, and that's a big statement to be invited to come test there. Not everybody gets that invitation. Yeah, the, the Stewart compound, their, their family, they keep pretty tight doors around everything as they should because they've, they've got all the magic down there. Uh, Stewart's trainer, Eldon Baker, and, and Dungey's coach trainer, Johnny O'Mara, have been really good friends for a number of years, uh, met each other through the mountain bike circuit. So uh, quite an advantage for them to, uh, for Dungey to be able to work with James. Here's Lawrence, the blue Yamaha, trying to work his way up into the field. He's chasing Andrew McFarland in the number 38. That's a rider in white on the green Kawasaki. And you talk about a flip from what the different style of racer and personality from what Ryan Dungey, that it doesn't get any more opposite than the 338 here of Jason Lawrence as he makes the move. Jason Lawrence, the wild child, really lives life by his own rules. Uh, unorthodox way of going about this, but the one thing that is unmistakable is that Jason Lawrence has got an incredible talent for riding these motocross bikes, and he shows it week in, week out. What is lacking is focus and the consistency, because we've seen him win the opening round, and then we've also seen him have some really bad motos. And we saw him win a Supercross Lice Championship this year as well, so he can do it if he wants to. Weekend on Freestone County Raceway. We're in Wortham, Texas. This is round three of the 2008 Motocross Lights Championship presented by FMF. Ralph Shaheen and Jeff Emig with you. Call the action and Aaron Bates covering everything down along the racetrack for us this weekend. Ryan Villapoto has been out front since this gate dropped on moto number one, and nobody's been able to catch the Kawasaki ride. But some decent battles going on back behind him. Jake Weimer, number 30 on the Honda. Our right side of your screen is reeling in the support rider, Bobby Canary. Canary has been inside the top five this whole moto, putting in an awesome ride. But it looks like Weimer right now has really found his groove. You see him on the pegs quite a bit. Not following Canary, choosing some alternate lines. Looks like here he's got the inside. Well, he comes right up alongside him, but Canary's able to get off the corner better. Just, just didn't carry the momentum. Oh, there he's got the line. Yep, squeezed him wide, and off goes Weimer. And the Geico Power Sports Honda rider is now picks up one more spot towards the front. Well, and it, it, in that sequence, it was Canary going wide, carrying some momentum, wide in the next turn. Weimer was inside, really struggled to make that double, went to the inside the next the next turn, that right-hander made the pass. So Weimer on a mission right now, working his way forward, looks very strong. Canary slots back into sixth. Of course, it's a combination of how you finish in both motos that'll decide your overall for the day. Now Weimer has caught up to Jason Lawrence. 
Here's Lawrence in the blue Yamaha. That happened pretty quick. Weimer's definitely found some hot lines. You can see he just seems to be choosing alternate lines, not following the rider in front of him, but just finding some smooth lines here too. And he doesn't, he starts way to the inside in a lot of these corners too, Judd. He's just staying out of the bumps. He's uh, just really using his head here. And you see him Look at the blasting speed. around the outside as Lawrence tries the inside. Great speed through that corner. And he is really mixing it up, isn't he? We're pretty far into this moto here. These sand whoops start to get a little bit deeper. Heart rate's up. I can't explain to you how much heat is building inside of the apparel and the helmet that there, these riders have on. Here comes Weimer on the inside. He takes the spot away. But Lawrence isn't done yet. He battles back and takes position right back. Fighting over fourth right now. Well, Lawrence has a lot of heart. He has a lot of pride also. Maybe even a little bit of ego involved in there. Doesn't want to let this position go by. Still racing pretty hard, but I'm telling you, Weimer right now looks so smooth and in command of his machine. And it really has a lot to do with his riding technique and standing on the pegs. What does that do? Why is standing on the pegs so important? Well, it just, it's, if your legs are strong, late in the moto like this, you can, you can stand on the pegs, use them as the shock absorbers, instead of sitting on the seat, bouncing all around. Or he could just get out front and dominate the moto, which is what Ryan Villapoto is doing. Tight but loose, I'm telling you. There's Trey Kennard in the background. And, and, and it's crazy with a rider like Villapoto, sometimes they make it look so easy, but what they're doing is so difficult. And they just seem to carry a little bit of more, mo little more momentum. They get through the ruts just a little bit cleaner. Maybe it was a quarter of a second that turn. Maybe it's a quarter of a second this turn. But in motocross, you're looking at a two minute plus track with upwards of 30 turns. You start to add all up those little bits of time saving here and there. And so Presenting Mike's Hard Light Lemonade. Making its visit to Texas. White flag is out. One more time around here in moto number one for Ryan Villapoto, the reigning champion. That's why he's got the red number plate with the black number one. And it's going to be hard to get that away from him this oh, year. Oh, yeah. Two time reigning champion. He's right. won this championship in his rookie year. Oh, Kennard is off. Supercross Lights champion. If you look at his helmet, that visor was almost sticking straight up. That only tells you one thing, that the visor probably dug itself into the dirt. Which is not good. Not good. Brett Metcalf hanging on inside the top 10. Had a great start to this moto, was up to second and started slipping back. Just laboring through for some of the riders, but right now, Villapoto being out front, this is such a great feeling because right now it's heart rate, temperature, everything's totally in control. Confidence is as high as what it's ever been. And for Ryan to be back on track after just a really challenging, mentally challenging opening part of the season for him and then to come out to Glen Helen and not win the first one, actually get a fifth, that was devastating for him. But his, his training, all of his practicing, and all this confidence that he knows in these races that he can be the man. You can see the, the fist pump there. This is where it's all coming together for him. Jeff, it really took him a while to get his Supercross season underway to get to Ryan Villapoto style. But now he's back here in the motocross tour without any question. Villapoto 
puts in a very Villapoto-esque performance here in moto number one. Problems for Kyle Cunningham, he was running in 12, and Stroop, he'll fight up to third. Dungey will finish in second. Take a look back a little bit deeper as the rest of the riders make their way to the line. Metcalf trying to get ninth. He's on the 123. He's battling with Canary. Here comes Jake. Seven, eighth, and ninth. All fighting it out here. Canary's on the red machine, the 45. Metcalf right there, and McFarland in the white jersey. And you see Canary, he's hanging on for dear life. He's got some serious challengers, just the sand whoops left. And here they come to the line. Canary looks like he's going to get there. For, whoa, Jeff, that was awful close at the line. That was Canary rolling across the finish line. We'll have to see if they gave that to Metcalf. Now, or McFarland, let's see. Oh, looks like they gave it to McFarland. Just in front of Canary. Unbelievable. Well, let's head down to Aaron News with Austin Stroop. Austin Stroop has been managing while he's off the track to be working on intensity levels. Austin, how much is that going to hap help you on a track as rough as this one? Yeah, it's so hot here. You know, the track's not as rough as last weekend, but dude, the heat and the humid and the bugs and everything, I'm just sweating walking around. So it's uh, it's tough, and you know, I got some work to do, but just happy to keep it on the podium and get ready for next weekend and next moto. Thanks a lot. Stay on top of the action and get green alerts from Speed Mobile. You want the absolute latest news and results? Get them right on your phone. Just text KX to 773333 on your mobile phone to get free motorcycle racing text alerts. Speed Green Alerts presented by Kawasaki. Here's Aaron again. Ryan, how difficult is this race compared to the other two rounds that we've started off the season with? It's uh, definitely good. You know, it's got some good ruts out there, and uh, I think, uh, you know, it is the hottest race yet. So, But uh, that's what we work so hard for. But uh, I couldn't thank my family enough, my mom and dad, Team Rockstar, Makita Suzuki, Target. Uh, Nike and uh, RG3 and Bershaw. Thanks. Is today's race going to be a true test of fitness? Yeah, second moto, I think so. I think uh, a lot of guys gave it a lot that first moto, so you'll see. Fitness will find out about speed, though, goes to Villapoto. Aaron? Well, the win streak continues for Ryan Villapoto, now making it five consecutive wins. Ryan, you look more exhausted at this round than any other rounds. How much does a factor of it play with the heat and humidity involved? Well, it's huge. I mean, the first two rounds were uh, pretty mild. Glen Helen was really, actually really cool, and then even Hangtown was pretty mild. But uh, it's our first race where it's hot, and uh, you definitely can feel it. It uh, plays a toll, and that's what we have trainers for. I have Randy Lawrence, and, uh, you know, I just can't thank the team enough. Thanks, guys. Well, Villapoto is certainly fast. We'll find out about his durability when we cut back. They say golden. Well, the Women's Motocross Association in action here as well. That's number one of Jessica Patterson having a little trouble getting her bike started for round number two of this season. Two motos just like the boys, a little trouble at the gate there, Jeff. That was Tara Geiger gets stuck in the gate of the first moto, and we had a knockdown brawl here between 67, Ashley Violet, and the champ, Jessica Patterson. Ashley just 16 years of age, and there's the number one of Jessica Patterson, the reigning champion, a five-time titleist in women's motocross competition. Sarah Whitmore on the 89, Baldy on the five. Through the sand whoops, towards the finish, it was such a close race. And moto number one at the line goes to Ashley Feilich. They'll line back up to do it again from moto number two. And it looked pretty much exactly the same way. Patterson on the number one, chasing Ashley. Well, Ashley's the young girl. This is only her second professional race, and the veteran was chasing her all day long. She gave her quite a run, but Ashley weathered the storm. So Ashley takes the win, sweeps both motos, gets a hug and a kiss from her mechanic and has a great day here in Texas. So after two rounds of six, Ashley's got a 15-point lead over Sarah Whitmore. Here she is with Aaron. Well, it could have only improved from last weekend. Ashley taking the second victory so far this season. What does this one mean to her after getting that first one out of the way? I'm just so shocked. I'm so pumped. I don't know what to say. 
it was a good race this whole weekend. The track was awesome. I'm so happy I came here and rode this round. Thank you, everybody. I hope I can keep going for this whole series. It'll be hard. Congratulations, Ashley. We look forward to watching her race some more this year. Well, there's Ryan Villapoto, but issues with Trey Kennard. Here's Aaron. Times continue to get tougher for the number 48 of Trey Kennard. If you notice during that first moto, he ended up going down on the second lap, gave himself a slight concussion, continued to ride around the track, and then pulled off with only two laps to go. He went to the Asterix Medic Unit and got checked out by Doc Bodnar, and his advice was sit this one out. You have given yourself a concussion. It's going to take a little bit of time to heal. Doc Bodnar, obviously, with the Asterix Medical Crew, Jeff. And concussion's a tough part as we get set for moto number two. was the key to the start for moto number one and it looks like it will be for moto number two but it's not going to be Villapoto getting the hole shot he had a terrible start and it's Sipes out front Sipes grabbing the hole shot as he got a great start in the first moto was running up front had something happen with the bike where he didn't finish but it's definitely rebounded this is just how you want to start out after DNF and a moto you want to get out front trying to go grab it and working in his favor is number one of Villapoto stuck back in the pack he just did not get off the gate good and got pinched over to the right side of the start for the mdk ktm out front is that davalos on the 577 martin davalos and austin stroop setting in third he's in a good position right now we don't know where villapoto is but that's going to put him up there. oh there's villapoto setting setting an eighth trying to work his way up through the field Jeff, temperatures peaking over the century mark. Really hot day here today. As you see the 577 Martin trying to hang in there on his MDK KTM as well. What well, we heard every one of our podium finishers in their interviews talked about just how hot it was, how humid it was, and how difficult it is to ride through this. And once again, they put down quite a bit of water. And if you, if you notice, Ralph, it's kind of in the inside or middle. That's why the riders are sweeping to the outside so much, trying to get away from that. And later on in the moto, some of those wet spots, if they'll dry up some. And from the other bikes, they'll get some new lines that have worked it in. Villapoto just slicing his way through right now. How much of, when you're racing in heat like this, how much of it is a mental thing? Well, it's, it's the mental side and that confidence that you build is that's what you do week in, week out. And when you're doing your own motos and you're working against the lap time, you have your mechanic or your trainer. As, as you're doing practice laps, you're working against the clock. You're always trying to keep on the same lap time. And every time that you accomplish those goals and you win those little battles during the week, this is where it plays out is on race day. Dungy battling with Davalos now. The rock star Makita Suzuki rider on the number 28 takes over second place. And, you know, Jeff Dungey looked the freshest out of the top three from moto number one. He, he looked right on the podium, looked very refreshed, like you said. Right now, he's setting in the position to win the overall. Of course, Ryan Villapoto is going to have something to say about that. Ryan is on the gas right now. I love watching him ride when, he, when he's challenged like this, when he has to go through the pack, especially on a wet, slippery track, how this is in spots. He's not afraid to let his feet come off the pegs and only hold on to the right side of the bars, never letting off the throttle. And I said that battle between Dungey and Davalos was for second. It was actually for third. Sipes is your leader. Stroop sits in second, who is teammate. Oh, and a bit of a bobble there for Villapoto. But he never lets off the throttle, just works his way through the track markers. Villapoto trying to work some inside lines, and I, I really like seeing that because he's setting up some lines to make some passes, maybe for the lead. Well, he's working Davalos right now. This should be for fourth. These riders just absolutely screaming these 250F machines, squeezing every inch of horsepower out of them. And it looks like Villapoto's going to get him as on the it, inside. As if it's not hot enough for these bikes. In the motocross championship, you see a lot of the teams actually will use bigger, taller radiators to hold more fluid. They change the flow of the coolant. Four strokes really, really have a lot of 
a lot of heat built up and then so much more than back in the two-stroke days. And that's been something that the manufacturers have developed through this top level of motocross racing here is a way to keep these engines cool. And it's these race teams, just like Mitch Payton's <coughs> Pro Circuit Kawasaki team, that this is where the research and development comes from, along with the factory teams uh, for all of the you know, all of the uh, production bikes. So you know, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, they all add, you know, they all have a better product for the, uh, for the consumer. Jeff, it looks like our race leader is slipping backwards. Sipes has dropped back as we go back to our progressive whole shot replay. And you see the KTM team members cheering him on as he grabs that whole shot. But he's lost the lead. It is now Austin Stroop in front of Ryan Dungey. It's Austin Stroop out front. The winner, Glenn Helen, earlier this year. He's got Ryan Dungey on the rock star Makita Suzuki giving chase. Freshman versus the sophomore. Will that extra year of experience and training work to Dungey's advantage? It makes a big difference at your local high school cafeteria, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Come prom time. Yo, big difference. <laughs> big difference. But Dungey closing in here, and Stroop is feeling the pressure. And Jeff, we talked about it after moto number one. Boy, Dungey looked like he hadn't even been out on the racetrack. He looked fresh, and it seems to be showing here now. He definitely is fresh. And I, don't you just love the motocross championship? We see these riders just really letting it hang out. The bike just moves around so much. And, for the mere mortal, they would have been on their head, but these guys have got the strength and talent to reel the machine back in and keep it going forward, and they never let off the throttle. Speaking of not a mere mortal, coming up behind them is that red number plate with the black number one on it, Ryan Villapoto looming in the distance. He's closing in. Dungey wants this lead. If he wants to lead long at all, he needs to make the pass now, put a little space between himself at Villapoto. Dungey's working on it, trying an outside line. But you're right, he can't wait too long because he's gonna wanna break away from Villapoto. You can see him right there and he's caught him. So now it's really a three rider battle for the lead. And the lead right now goes to Dungey. But can he gap now Stroop and Villapoto? Stroop casually looking back to see where Villapoto's at, but what he doesn't know is Villapoto's right behind him. Dungey working the outside here. Now watch as he hits this double. Stroop has a little more of a downside. Well, we just missed it, but Dungey landed in a flat section, really grabbed some momentum, snuck by on the inside in the next turn. Villapoto's now gotten around Stroop. He's up to second, so can Dungey hold him off? Dungey's really gonna have oh, to Oh, boy! Look at Villapoto off the racetrack and the fans scattering off the fence line. Villapoto has been off the track three times so far that we've seen. The rule for that is if you go off the track, you cannot gain an advantage. In, it, in each one of these scenarios that we've seen, you have to come back on in a safe spot for Villapoto and every other rider that you talk to that they will argue their point that no matter what, they came in in the safest spot possible. But what they're not gonna do is let off the throttle and lose any time. It's a bit of a judgment call, isn't it? <laughs> the rider always seems to see it a little bit different than the AMA official. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing you can't mistake in your rear view mirror, if you had one on one of these bikes, would be the fact that Villapoto is all over Ryan Dungey. He is so fast. Jeff, he had a terrible start, but he has sliced his way through the field, and he has caught Dungy without any problem. But make no mistake about it, Ryan Dungy is gaining some valuable experience right now. This is how you learn, first off, how to ride in front of the champion, withstand that pressure right there. The crowd's there cheering him on. Dungy knows that he, he hears Villapoto. He sees him off to the side. He's gonna try to keep his head, keep his heart rate down, and keep the best momentum that he can through the turn, not make any mistakes. When Dungey, well, here he goes. There goes Villapoto right by. And I was about to say, when we watched Dungey battle with Stroop, it was a freshman versus a sophomore. 
Now it's the sophomore versus the BMOC, big man on campus. And Villapoto <laughs> just proved why he's the stud on the tour. Ryan Villapoto is back out in front, just like he was at the end of moto number one. And he's going to return to the action. Look, looks like maybe he was actually going to leave the racetrack. I thought maybe he was going back out. Battle for six, meanwhile, continues. Sipes battling with the Gurky on the 41. Couple of teammates here. The MDK KTM guys have been very strong today. They've been right inside the top 10, mixing it up. You see Sipes right now had that great hole shot. See him kind of standing on the pegs a little bit now. This heat down here in Texas might have got the best of him, but being from Vine Grove, Kentucky, you know it's hot and humid back there also. I'll tell you what, it's hot everywhere this year. No matter where you are in the country, it is really cooking. And these guys are going to be dealing with it all summer long. Well, and we'll see if all these summertime thunderstorms come into play. Here in Texas, they've added some water, but it very easily could have had one of them gnarly Texas thunderstorms come through and flood this place out. Jeff, what do you think of this racetrack? It's the second year we've been here now. You like it? I do like it. I love the soil here, the composition of it, uh, the turns and how the bumps are. The only complaint that I have is that some of the jumps are a little bit small. They're a little bit amateurish for these riders. And I'm sure as uh, uh, this race continues that they're gonna learn how to build this track to a little better spec here. But one thing is these huge sand whoops here leading up to the finish. That's a, that's a pro section there. Definitely a uh, Sipes. Sipes pulls up, Ralph. He is definitely, he's he pulling off the track. And Gerke went right by Han. Hard to speculate whether there was a problem with the bike or a problem with the rider there. As you've seen, Sipes had the hole shot, worked his way back through. There Heat he exhaustion might have got the best of him at this point. That's Doc an Bodner. Injury. Doc Bodner talking to him. I thought Gerke got around Han. I guess he did. He's tucked in right behind him in seven. Now here's Weimer, and Han has caught him. We saw Weimer put on a good run in moto number one. Yeah, fantastic ride. He's been very strong in each race. And Tommy Hahn here, you see, he's he's a Texas rider just on the other side of Dallas from where we're at now. Trains in this type of heat and humidity. I'm sure he gets a couple of extra practice sessions in here at this track. It's going to be good enough for a top 10 finish. He's got to be happy with that. But you always like to be racing forward. You don't like to give up positions at any time. But at the end of the second moto, that's hard to take also. 23 riders left competing here in moto number two. Out of 40 that started. 40. That's 40 that started this morning. Because remember, even like Trey Kennard didn't take the gate for moto number two. But it has been a day that has been really tough with a lot of attrition. So it hasn't necessarily been the track. It's been Mother Nature along with the competition that's got the best of these riders. Battle for fourth, Weimer on the 30, Metcalf on the Kawasaki, the 123, and the Monster Energy Pro Circuit rider holds on to the slot for right now. See, Metcalf was guarding the inside. He's left the inside open here. Weimer working his way through, nice pass. Still looking very strong. You see Weimer on the pegs. Means he's got a strong core, strong legs to be able to stand up throughout these 35 minutes uh, motos. If Metcalf can hold on, he's still having a better moto number two than he did a moto number one, where he just barely finished inside the top 10. Coming back to Texas for the conclusion of moto number two for the AMA Toyota Motocross Lights. Wortham, Texas, Freestone County Raceway. Coming to the conclusion of mono number two. Weimer right there on the Geico Power Sports Honda running in fourth. And I'm telling you, there's so many things that add into a rider being strong here at the end of the second moto. As we see the last lap, it was just a lap or two ago that Metcalf was in front. But Metcalf has really hit a wall and dropped off. You see Tommy Hahn 
threw the rope out, lassoed Weimer, has hung right on the back of him. But I'm, I'm telling you, it's not only your training, it's also your riding technique, your, your use of your energy and, and how efficient you are with your riding technique that can really be a benefit here at the end, late in the second moto on a hot day. To be an energy sapper, can it? Oh yeah, definitely. If you work hard and if you're if you're all over the bike and you, and you really struggle through, you have to be very strong and fit. But if you're efficient and you use your skills properly and your body positioning, like number one does, that's how you have all that energy left over at the end of each moto. Which is interesting too about Villapoto, because remember he really had to charge through the field today, had to exert a lot of energy here in moto number two as opposed to moto number one, and he still Looks like he's got a lot of strength here on this final lap. Well, he's a rider. He's on a mission right now. He is so focused. He's building momentum. Remember, this is going to be his last year in the lights class. He has to get himself up to a level to race with the top motocross racers. He's got a whole summer to gain confidence and learn. Ryan Villapoto through the signature section here in Wortham County, and he takes the win. Ryan Villapoto takes both motos here today in Texas. This weekend on Speed, we're getting... Tuesday on Super Bikes, from daredevil stunts to extreme rides, host Jason Britton knows where the hottest sport bike action lives. Go inside the sport bike scene with Super Bikes, Tuesday night at 10 Eastern and 11 Pacific, only on Speed. Let's show you the results here, our Toyota Trucks unofficial results page. Ryan Villapoto, number one all day and in moto number two. Andrew McFarland comes back to finish 12th, Canary 14th. Here's Aaron. If it was just a couple more laps, there's a possibility that he may have given up. Austin, you were at your wit's end when you came in there. You fell over with exhaustion. How brutal were the conditions? You know, it's hot, you know. I've been training and working hard, but, you know, this the heat got to me. You know, California was like, it's like winter time last week, but, uh, you know, just go back and train hard, and um, it was a tough moto, and I luckily got through it and got a good start. How do you prevent heat exhaustion when you're racing? You know, I tried to breathe, but, you know, everybody was telling me to cool down. And you see, Felt like the blow dryer was just right on my head, so it was, it was just tough. You know, I just tried to make it through and ride solid, but you know, I was tired like halfway into it and I gave up. So it was good though. Congratulations on a great performance. Thank you. Well, damage control, they always say, if you want to win a championship and when things don't go great, and I'd say he did all right today, Austin Stroop. He sits third. Villapoto takes the overall. Here's Aaron again. Were you surprised from the comeback that Ryan Villapoto did today? Yeah, I was. I mean, like, I thought it for sure when he might have got by me, uh, would have been a little low on energy, but uh, he, he sprinted by me. So he's got to work on some things and uh, come back next week strong. So. Congratulations on your first go at uh, Freestone National Park. Thanks. I appreciate it. Well, Dungey looked pretty good. Here's a look at the points. Villapoto stretches it out a little bit over Ryan Dungey, but I got to say, Ryan Dungey looked like he was pretty strong at the end of this one. How's Ryan? Here's Aaron. Well, Ryan Villapoto reeled them in one by one. Ryan, a little bit of a rough start for you, but managed to, to separate that points lead a little bit further. Take us through how the conditions were out there, because a lot of you guys are coming in dropping like flies. Yes, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, man, it's really hot out. And for the for our first, you know, hot race, it's uh, ob obviously always the first one's the toughest. And uh, we made it through this weekend, and uh, track was good. Track's really rough, and uh, and I just can't... You know, I can't, uh, can't let it slip away this year. Need to, need to stay on the box every weekend. For the first time since 2001, number four won't be standing.